Brittleness and ductility, both properties are very, very important. You have to choose brittleness for some application, ductility for other set of application. During the time of emergency, when you are traveling by train or by bus or if you are in a building where there is a fire situation. When the emergency happens, we are always guided to go to a box which is transparent and has a glass covering. Why is that so? We are trying to use design for failure. By one small impact, you should be able to access to the button or the hammer or whatever hose pipe uh, to get to attend to this, uh, the situation. So, where brittleness is important, here it is planned for design for failure, ductility. Ductility is very important. When I take a sheet and I start bending the sheet, to what extent I can bend or what extent I can draw a cup, there ductility comes into existence. And when we talk about ductility, we also try to have toughness property integrated into it. Both of these things can be easily found out by doing a stress strain relationship graph. The content of today's lecture is going to be brittleness, factors influencing brittleness, testing for brittleness, ductility, factors influencing ductility, testing for ductility, case study wherein which brittle failure in liberty ship, then case study ductile failure of de Havilland comet. And finally, we will have a recap of this lecture. Brittleness is the tendency of a material to break or undergo a fracture showing little to no plastic deformation when subjected to stress. You take a stress strain graph, you have a material which fails. So, let us take it for glass or any ceramic material. The Young's modulus will be very, very high, E is very high for brittle materials as compared to that of ductile materials. So, brittleness is a tendency to break or undergo a fracture showing no plastic deformation when subjected to stress or subjected to load. The same example I will give you for brittleness, again designed for failure. Many a times you would have seen in taekwondo or martial arts, in martial arts classes they always used to demonstrate breaking of a tile. They never will show you breaking of an aluminum bar or a stainless steel bar or a mild steel bar. Another example, if you watch Hollywood or Bollywood or Tollywood or Collywood movies, you will always see that the hero or the villain will be breaking through a, a glass and then coming to the spot. Again, this is planned for design for failure. So, all those things they always consider brittleness. In brittleness, all you have to do is initiate a crack or do or apply a small impact load. When we apply a small impact load, the, the load leads to crack formation and then happens a coagulation of cracks that lead to a sudden failure of material. Okay. If we move towards ampule which is used for injection, there also it is designed for 
failure. You would have seen doctor or the paramedic breaking the ampule, uh, then they uh, use an injection to take the medicine out for, uh, uh, for a small dosage for you. So, there also it is designed for failure and it is using the concept of brittleness. Such materials absorb very little energy before leading to failure. It is a characteristic by lack of ductility, such materials do not significantly deform before fracture. Brittleness is typically associated with a material such as glass, ceramic and some high strength metals. This is a typical response of a brittle material. You will see when you try to do a tensile or when you try to do a shear, it will immediately start fracturing at a place. There will be a complete fracture, there is no plastic deformation. Whereas, when we try to look at a ductile fracture, you will always see they will try to form a cone neck shape. So, this is a neck and cone shape. So, it will start elongating. So, you can see here there is an elongation. So, you can see a ductile fracture, this is for a very high ductile material, this is for a normal ductile material, but for a metal material you see there is no cup and cone structure form, it shears with a very small instant of plastic deformation. Such materials tend to have a crystalline structure with strong, but inflexible atomic bond contribution to the inability of plastic deformation. When we look into microscopical mechanism, here what it clearly says is majority of the brittle materials will have ionic bond. Ionic bond is perfect bond, so where in which it is locked and any small heating or any small load applying, it will lead to breakage of this bond. So, this breakage of this bond directly leads to failure. Understanding the brittleness is crucial for applications when sudden failures can have serious consequences. So, a stress strain graph. So, this is what area under the curve where in which we talk about toughness property and if it is within the elastic, we talk about resilience property. For resilience for rubber, it is very high and this is where we try to take the Young's modulus within the stress strain uh, elastic limit we try to do the Young's modulus. When we try to do the Young's modulus for brittle materials, you see it will be extremely high, okay. but the plastic deformation is next to negligible. Low plastic deformation, they exhibit very little plastic deformation before failure. They fracture almost immediately upon reaching the elastic limits without showing any significant bending or stretching. It has very high hardness. They are often very hard resistant surface indentation and wear. They have very high hardness is there. Because of that, that leads to resistance to surface indentation and wear. Because when two surfaces are in contact, when we start trying to have a friction, when we try to move relative motion, there will be always a friction. This friction will lead to wear. In metals, what happens? The localized temperature goes high that will try to either soften the material or strain harden the material. If you have ductility property, you will go towards strain hardening. But when you have a brittle material, both these properties are not possible. So, softening is not possible, strain hardening is not possible. So, here what happens? It tries to resist to a large extent where after a certain time, it leads to failure. The hardness arises from the strong atomic bond within their crystalline structure. High compressive strength, brittle materials generally have a very high compressive strength, allowing them to withstand large compressive forces uh, without deforming. When you uh, look at cutting tools, there will be lot of load which is given on top of a tool. So, there will be compressive load. When the chip moves, it will try to give lot of compressive load. Then the compressive load, what happens is the cracks cannot grow. So, it the ceramic material or the glass material can withstand very high compressive load. Okay. 
So, brittle materials generally have high compressive strength allowing them to withstand large compressive forces without deformation. However, with a very little tensile it just shatters. Sudden failure is another characteristics of brittle material which is to be handle it with care right. Sudden failure when subjected to stress brittle materials fail suddenly and catastrophically characterized by sharp clean break with little to no warning or plastic deformation. The glass bottle when it is dropped it shatters, it shatters instantly right that is a big problem. Uh, nowadays of course, to come out with this problem what they are doing is they are trying to have toughened glass. So, even when it is dropped down it does not break so easily. Fractured uh, behavior, they tend to fracture in a characteristic manner often producing smooth flat fractured surface which may exhibit patterns such as cochlidol shell like fracture in materials like glass. Low impact resistance, these materials have low impact resistance and are prone to shatter when struck. So, uh, use this as an advantage when you try to hit or do an impact load on a brittle material, uh, it is expected that the brittle material will fracture, but if you can use it for absorbing some amount of shock. So, that means to say some amount of redistribution of energy that is also good right. So, in a bulletproof jacket if you see there will be Kevlar which is kept in the uh, front end, there will be again Kevlar which will be kept at the back end, in between they keep tiles, ceramic tiles. When the bullet hits, these ceramic tiles try to absorb energy and shatter. Once they shatter, these are ceramic materials. Once they shatter, the energy is absorbed. So, the so much of energy is absorbed here and only a small amount of energy is further allowed to penetrate and then comes to the human body. So, here nowadays people are working a lot to make sure that low impact resistance that leads to a prone to shatter, while it shatters it absorbs. Temperature sensitivity, brittle materials can become more prone to fracture at lower temperatures as their ability to deform plastically decreases drastically. This phenomena is called as ductile to brittle transition. This is very important phenomena which is used. Crystalline structure, the atomic structure of brittle materials is usually crystalline with atoms arranged in a highly ordered and rigid lattice. So, you can see here BCC, FCC or HCP. Here you see the atoms are tightly held and they are bonded nicely. So, crystal structure plays a very important role for brittleness. In a ductile material, we will try to have metallic bond. So, there will be transfer of electrons and there will be conductivity, all these things will come into existence. Stress concentration, brittle materials are highly sensitive to stress concentration such as cracks or notch and other flaws. This imperfection can significantly reduce the material strength leading to premature failure. The examples of brittle material glass used in windows, glasses, drinking glasses, bottles etcetera. They have very high strength, but fracture suddenly. Ceramics including porcelain and aluminum. Porcelain if you see our tiles whatever uh, is given to our floor, uh, if you drop a heavy load it tries to shatter. You keep walking on it, it, it takes a compressive load, but if you keep uh, jumping with a shoe with a sharp edge then you see the tile will crack. So, includes porcelain and alumina is used in ceramic, high hardness, excellent compressive strength, excellent compressive strength is there for ceramic. Cast iron used in uh, pipes and machine parts, pipes also you will see majority of the time there will be taking lot of compressive load and when you talk about machine parts, cast iron it will be always used for bed. So, bed is the base of a machine that will be always made out of cast iron. Cast iron has a property of taking shock, but there is no ductility in it. So, it will not deflect, it takes shock and it absorbs shock, it does not fracture so easily. So, pipes which are used for sewage pipes, they are all made out of uh, cast iron. Then concrete common in construction uh, and high compression strength, 
brittle until uh, under tensile strength. So, this is also the concrete pipes which are used for construction, they are also part of brittle material. You can see porcelain material breaking. Once I was uh, visiting South Africa, so it was a very interesting scene. There is a huge market area. So, there was an old man who was uh, sitting in front of a food restaurant and uh, what he was trying to do is every 15 minutes once he was throwing down a porcelain plate. The porcelain plate shattered. So, it shattered and created uh, a huge shrieking noise. So, that made every people attention towards that shop. So, by doing so, he was able to attract the customers. So, once he broke the porcelain plate, it produced sound. So, from that sound, when you turn around, he kept a notice there saying that what is today's menu or what is discount. So, you see how beautifully people use porcelain plates for advertisement. Concrete is also there. Concrete can take extremely good compressive load. Your buildings are all made out of concrete, but very poor uh, plasticity will be there. In order to get out of that, what people do is they try to attach rods or they say tie rods. These tie rods will take some amount of plasticity and it will try to take so the concrete will not break. And this is a concept used in all metro rails if you see they, they build concrete beams and then they put a tie rod to do it. The factors affecting brittleness, uh, the brittleness is influenced by several factors uh, that impact their mechanical property. A few factors influencing brittleness are atomic bond and crystal structure. Materials with strong rigid atomic bond tend to be more brittle because these bonds resist deformation and promotes sudden fracture. Impurities and defects also influences brittleness. Many a times you see a colored glass. These colored glass are impurities which are added or sometimes it can be defects when the light passes, it tries to do diffraction and other light phenomena are there. These defects are used for advantage and sometimes these defects are also used to introduce transparency. Presence of impurities, microstructural defects like grain boundary dislocation or discontinuities can act as stress concentrators, reduce the material resistance to fracture and promoting brittle fracture under stress. Temperature is also a major influencing factor. So, like in uh, metals, in ceramics also you will try to have something like equal to metric point. But in ceramics what we always do is they will call it a ceramics or polymers, they call it as a glass transition, transition temperature. So, there will not be a perfect sharp change you will have a small change which goes like a slope. So, if you see impact energy with respect to temperature, you can draw a midline. Below this midline, you will have brittleness and above it, you will have ductility. So, if you see here, there is a slope. So, here you see high strength materials and the top you see low strength materials. So, this transition right, is very important in ceramic materials. Temperature, many materials become more brittle at lower temperatures due to the decreased atomic mobility and increased susceptibility to fracture, known as ductile to brittle transition at low temperatures. Loading rate, higher loading rate, impact load is a higher loading rate. Higher loading rate can reduce the material's ability to deform plastically leading to a brittle fracture material composition. Certain composition can increase brittleness by promoting the formation of brittle phase or reduce ductile through segregation or precipitation. Okay. So, a certain composition such as high carbon steel can increase the brittleness by promoting formation of brittle phases. Grain size plays an another important role. Smaller grain size generally improves toughness and reduces brittleness by hindering crack propagation, whereas the vice versa, large grains can act as initiation sites for cracks. So, how do you generate the small grains? What we do is we try to do heat treatment. I am talking about glass or even metals. We try to do 
heat treatment. We try to take it to a high temperature, quench it. When we try to quench it, the grains will be formed and all these grains will lead to small grain formation. Okay. Environmental factors, exposure to environmental conditions like humidity, chemical, radiation can accelerate material degradation, weaken bonds and promote corrosion or embrittlement, thereby increasing susceptibility to fracture. Environmental factors like hydrogen embrittlement can happen. So, you see here concrete which is there, uh, which is undergoing damage because of the environmental condition. It can be humidity, chemical or radiation which can accelerate. So, for identifying the brittleness, we always try to do a tensile test. Brittleness is determined by completing a tensile test and calculating the ductility of the material. A material considered to be brittle if it exhibits low ductility during the tensile test. So, as I discussed in the previous lectures, tensile test you will have a upper jaw, lower jaw. These upper jaw and lower jaw are used to hold the specimen. The lower jaw is fixed to the frame, the upper jaw is given a strain rate or it is given a feed rate through which it holds the sample and pulls in the top direction. Okay. So, this is how the movement of the cross section. So, here what there is a feed rate or a moving rate. right? Uh, so, if you can change this, you can try to create sudden impact or slow feed rates and see what is the material response. It measures the stress, stress a material withstands while stretching before breaking. So, a tensile test when we do, many a times for a glass we never do a dog bone sample, uh, for metals yes we do. So, these are the uh, stages where in which you can see the elongation. So, this is the elastic region and then you have the yield, from yield you go to ultimate, ultimate to fracture. So, necking starts at ultimate, okay. after that it leads to fracture. This is for a typical metal, you see this response. When we try to this region of plastic strain, it is reduced to a large extent. And here you see the elastic deformation will happen, here uniform plastic deformation will happen, uniform plastic and here it is non-uniform. So, it can happen immediately, it can even happen here and the slope can go like this. Right? So, it is non-uniform. So, we always try to plan here or we will plan here. Let us move to ductility. Ductility is a property describing the ability of a material to undergo significant plastic deformation before fracture, making of a wire, making of a sheet, making of a cup which has a, a high aspect ratio. So, what is aspect ratio? L by D. So, length by diameter, right. So, we try to look into it. So, for example, you started with a sheet and then you did. Then, when we are trying to bend for a hairpin, for a jump clip, right. So, so all these things are made out of jump clip. So, all these things are made from a metal, wherein which there is ductility property. Ductility is a property describing the ability of a material to undergo significant plastic deformation. This characteristic allows the material to be stretched into a wire or deformed without breaking. Ductility is typically measured by material's ability to withstand tensile stress, which is qualified by the amount of elongation or reduction in the area of the failure. Ductility is a crucial consideration in material selection for structural and mechanical application as it enhances the material's ability to withstand impact, bending, stretching without catastrophic failure. Characteristics of ductility, high plastic deformation can happen, can stretch and bend significantly before break, high toughness. So, uh, it absorbs and dissipates energy 
resisting impact and shock. For example, a guitar string you keep playing, right? guitar string sometimes you play it at high frequency when your hand moves up and down, up and down, high frequency, amplitude is very low. Right? When you try to go in travel in a bus, right? when you travel in a bus, num passengers getting up or uh, getting down the bus, it is a uh, lot of absorption is there. When the bus tries to hit a, uh, hit another surface, so then it is absorption. Uh, when we try to hit a, a rod which is there in the bus with your bag, it is absorption and dissipation of energy. When we are trying to, uh, when we are trying to do cooking uh, using a utensil, then there is a lot of shock, a uh, lot of absorption and lot of dissipation of energy. So, when you drop, when you drop a spoon from a certain height, it is absorption and dissipation. Good tensile strength uh, withstands significant tensile strength and elongates under load. Moderate to very high ductility is there, exhibits sustainable uh, substantial elongation and reduction, uh, reduced uh, stress distribution, uh, redistribution stress around the notch and crack prevents the sudden failure to happen. So, these are some of the examples you see here. You can make a ring, you can make a hairpin, this is a bolt uh, which is made, you can make a nut, these are different angular clips, these are S hooks which are used to hold or this S type hooks are used even for uh, spring balance where in which the weight is measured. Right? Today when you go to small vendors, they have this digital display S type which can measure up to 3 kilos. Strain hardening becomes stronger and harder as it deforms. Uh, then thermal conductivity is also part of it. When we try to look at many of the ceramic materials, brittle materials, they are all non-conductive. So, thermal conductivity effectively conducts heat, electricity suitable for heat dissipation application, formability and workability easily formed, bend and machined into a desired shape. Ceramics machining is very, very difficult. Giving a shape to ceramic is very difficult. Generally, what we do is we try to take ceramic, take even pottery, we try to have clay, we try to do give a shape to it and then after it is given a proper shape, then we go for baking. When we go for baking, all the bond whatever it is there, it gets converted into ionic bond. So, this ionic bond makes the ceramic harder. When we are trying to work with metals, it tries to give us this flexibility because it has a property of ductility. When you are drilling a hole, there is a huge impact load which comes through the tool on the workpiece. Now, when it starts machining, there will be a huge load. Uh, all this load gets redistributed. So, the metal does not get fractured, whereas when you keep a ceramic, when you start drilling it, it just fractures. So, fatigue resistance for a metal is always high, better resistance to cyclic loading than brittle fracture. For example, this clip, hairpin clip, you can release, load it, unload it, roll it, unload it, no problem. The wires which are used for, for uh, electrification, the copper wire which is there, you can bend it to any shape to meet out the requirements. Weldability can be welded. Uh, weldability is a property where in which the metals can be used for joining. Dissimilar metals joining can happen. That is because of the ductility property. So, some of the examples for ductility, you will see gold, a highly malleable and ductile uh, precision metal. You can see gold block leading to a gold coin, from a gold coin go leading to a gold wire, which can be used for engineering application or ornamental application. Jewelry, Electronic and design, electronic industry also used gold wire. Then dentistry also people are using gold wires. Silver known for its ductility and conductivity used for jewelry, electrical contacts and silver wares. Copper extremely ductile uh, and excellent electrical and thermal conductivity that is why we use copper bottom vessel in cooking. We also use, it also have medicinal values, we have copper water bottles today. Okay, extremely ductile with uh, excellent electrical and thermal conductivity. Application is electrical wiring, plumbing and electronics are there. Next is aluminum, lightweight, ductile and resistance to corrosion. So, these are the other thing uh, aluminum which is also used in utensils. Utensils are made out of aluminum. 
wheel rim is made out of aluminum, bottles are made out of aluminum, this is called as white body part uh, of a car which is also made out of aluminum, lightweight, ductile and resistance to corrosion. Today we are replacing it with titanium, it is expensive, still aluminum plays a very, very important role. Application aircraft structure, automobile utensils, door frames, beverage can, the coke can, whatever you drink, it is made out of uh, aluminum and foils. The factors influencing ductility, temperature plays a very important role in ductility. By increasing the temperature, you can increase the ductility. That is why what we do is we always try to take a material to a higher temperature and deform much faster. The atomic movement becomes easy. Impact material that are brittle at low temperatures can become ductile when heated. Material composition alloying elements enhances or reduces ductility. So, basically gold alone does not have so much of ductility, but when you mix it with copper, it has strength and malleability coming together. Next is uh, grain size, smaller grain size tries to increase the ductility, impact, impact is fine grain material are more ductile due to their ability to accommodate plastic deformation through more grain boundaries, strain rates. The speed at which the stress is applied to a material, high strain rates can reduce the ductility. For example, if you try to take a rubber band, instantly pull it at a very high speed for a longer elongation, it shatters. But slowly if you do it, even for a large distance, there is not much of plastic de uh, deformation getting introduced. Heat treatment, the process such as annealing can alter the microstructure and uh, to increase ductility. It impact is heat treatment can relieve internal uh, stresses and refine grain structures, enhancing the ductility. Impurities and defects, uh, the impurities, inclusion and defects can reduce ductility. So, the impact is clean defect free materials are generally used. Work hardening, which is also by applying heat you try to deform. Plastic deformation increases dislocation density, reduces the ductility. So, cold working can reduce ductility, that is why we always try to do heat treatment. So, generally in manufacturing or especially in rolling, we have three things. One is called as room temperature deformation, warm temperature deformation and hot temperature deformation. So, room temperature is room temperature, almost three times the TM we go for warm heat treatment, 0.1 to 0.3 times the TM. Hot is somewhere close to 0.6 to 0.6 to 0.8 TM, we try to go. Again it differs from material to material. So, by changing the temperature, what we do is we try to change the microstructure, we try to uh, reduce the work hardening, have more ductility for your output. So, this can mean that if you are trying to make a chair or make a bucket or make a utensil, you can draw it for long. So, that means to say the depth can be longer, the depth of the vessel can be longer. The microstructure, the arrangement phase distribution within the material can happen which also influences the ductility. Uniform and stable microstructure generally enhances the ductility. The test for ductility, uh, the test for ductility can be performed many ways. This is a typical dog bone sample. You can do a tensile test and get the stress strain response. Area under the curve also you can try to talk about the ductility. Okay. The tensile test is one standard test used to in a specimen which is subjected to uniaxial tensile force until failure, you can get the ductility. You can also do a bend test. Bend test is nothing, but you try to have two loads at the bottom and then you apply a single load at the top. So, this is called as three point bend test or a bend test. A test where material sample is bent to a specific angle or until it fractures is called as bend test. The procedure is going to be the specimen is placed on a support, these are the supports right uh, and a force is applied at the midpoint to do it. You can have single point, you can also have two points. So, this is when it is a single point, it is called as single point it is called as three point bend test. When it is two point on the top, right? it is called as 
four point bend test. In ceramic material nowadays we try to do four point bend test because now the load is distributed over an area you get a better response as compared to that of a three point bend test. In the three point bend test suppose by chance if the place where you keep the load has some defect then that helps in propagation very fast. In order to get out of that situation we move to four point bend test. Okay. So, the supports the supports can be adjusted depending upon your bend angle and depending upon the depth whatever you have to give. So, that is uh, the choice for every material there is a different bend response or angle from there you can try to find out what is the response for ductility. Output is observed that the materials ability to undergo plastic deformation without fracture indicates its ductility. Fracture toughness is another test which we conduct for finding out the ductility measures the ability of a material with a crack to resist fracture also we can try to find out uh, the ductility. You remember ISAT test we saw, Charpy test we saw from there also we can try to do. A pre cracked specimen is subjected to a tensile stress and a stress intensity factor is measured at a point of the crack propagation fracture toughness. The output higher fracture toughness values indicate better ductility. Creep test is also used. Creep test is long term deformation of a material under a constant stress at elevated temperature. At a certain higher temperature constant stress for a longer time. So, the procedure a constant load is applied to a specimen at a specific temperature and the deformation is measured over time. Output materials that show significant deformation before rupture are considered uh, more ductile. Let us now see two case studies. Brittle fracture which happened in the Liberty ship background. Liberty ship were mass produced during the World War II using welded steel plates for rapid and economic construction. They could not deform a lot of depth cannot be done. So, what they do is they do it as piece wise and these pieces were joined by welding. Okay. So, incident several ships experience catastrophic brittle fracture often breaking in half especially in cold water. The factors contributing to brittle fracture are material properties, steel composition, high carbon content and impurities increased brittleness. Low temperature the steel became more brittle at low and less tough in cold environment. Cold environment means in minus. The welding technique, the welding quality, early welding technique caused stress concentration and defects and it introduced residual stress. The welding introduced residual stress. Why residual stress? Because there in welding what you do is you apply heat. In welding you always apply, you, you want to pour a material here. How do you pour a material? You apply heat here. Heat, it can be heat, it can be pressure, it can be friction. Okay. So, heat is one place where you apply. So, that always leads to welding. So, when we apply heat there is a non-uniform uh, shrinking. The welding induced residual stress that weakened the structure, the residual stresses are introduced. The design and construction is the stress concentrators, sharp corners and abrupt change in cross section acted as point of weakness. The outcome is the failure highlight the importance of understanding material property particularly the effect of temperature welding practices leading to improvement in the build uh, in the ship building technique and material selection. Let us look at the other thing which is other case study which is ductile fracture of the D Havilland comet. This is a plane. So, the context is the comet was the world's first commercial jet airlines introduced in the early 1950s. Incident several comet aircraft suffered catastrophic failure in mid flight leading to multiple crashes. So, it is here these are all. Uh, so, if you see here it is like this right. So, the factors contributing to brittle fracture 
material property aluminum alloy the fuselage was made out of aluminum alloy which exhibits ductile behavior under stress. The stress concentration repeated pressurization cycle caused fatigue cracks to develop around the window and rivets. So, earlier the windows were square if you now travel and see it is always like this. So, repeated pressurization cycles. So, in, when you get into the plane there will be a pressure which is applied. Repeated pressurization cycles caused fatigue cracks to develop around the windows and rivets which are used for joining. The design flaw square windows, the square design of the window created stress concentrations at the corners exacerbating crack propagation. The structural fatigue, the continuous pressurization and depressurization cycle led to metal fatigue and form of ductile fracture. The outcome is the investigation into the comet disaster led to significant improvement in aircraft design such as to use rounded windows and better understanding of metal fatigue. These changes enhanced the safety and reliability of future aircrafts. So, in this lecture we saw what is brittleness, how does it differ from ductility. We provided some examples for brittleness. Brittleness considered a disadvantage in certain engineering applications. Key factors affecting or influencing brittleness. What is the test which is used for brittleness? From there we move towards ductility, understood different examples in ductility and found out the influence factors in the, the main factors influencing ductility. We compared brittleness and ductility. Finally, we saw how does this ductility and brittleness help in engineering design. So, today do it by yourself, I have two exercises. The first exercise is going to be try to take a glass, uh, a glass window or glass and try to make a hole in the glass panel using a hot rod which is held uh, in hand of you, right? hot rod which you try to like a soldering rod, hot rod you try to make a hole. So, that will be first exercise you will try to see what is the response which is happening around it. The next one is take a polymer sheet and try to repeat the same exercise. Try to record the shape of the hole during drilling in plastic material and after drilling. Here you will see the concept of temperature introduced residual stresses and how does it help in deforming the shape. The thermal conductivity and expansion plays a very important role. The third point is going to be try to take a rod, a plastic wire, I would say wire, plastic, plastic wire in the sense where in which you have little bit of stiffness. Try to bend and create a free form shape, any shape a very small plate or a table coaster you can try to make a very small one and try to see when you try to bend what happens to it, when you try to bend and lock what happens to it and finally, how do you get it. So, when you do these three exercises, you will truly start appreciating the influence of material with respect to ductility and brittleness. These are the references which we have used in generating the slides and thank you so much. Thank you.